right. Well, first, I just want to say thank you for letting us be here, and an even bigger thank you for you being here. It's kind of early on a Sunday morning, and it's your weekend, so we appreciate the chance to share some of this work with you. Um, I'm going to dive right in. I mean, one of the things we're really going to talk about today is an ongoing effort at Nissan to make sure that they're getting people to engage. And we, we call it going from the couch to the driver's seat, but really it's about getting people to see it, hear it, touch it. And you're going to hear us talk about a lot about that today because... Go ahead. No, go ahead. Okay. All right. I've got to make sure I don't turn and look at the slide, too, or I'm going to get away from the microphone. Um, a lot of things, before we dive into the actual work, I want to give you just a little bit of context at what's happening at Nissan and why this is becoming more and more important. Because let's face it, we want to do these experiences all day long, but our clients, they have cars to sell and they have business objectives to hit. And so we've got to make sure that what we're doing aligns to those objectives so that it can be successful. And what's happening at Nissan right now is they are in a big, big challenge to grow market share. Their market share is just under 8% in the U.S. Uh, Charles Ghosn at the auto show last week was just talking about how they need to get to 10%. The truth is their marketing budgets are based on getting to that 10%. If they don't start hitting those market share goals or showing that they're getting there fast, they could get their budgets cut. Uh, they could get more pressure from around the world. So it's very serious for these guys to move the cars. Now, it's also important to make money on the cars. They always want to improve the brand. But right now, if you walk around that building, they're talking a lot about unit sales. And so they've had five core models that you can see here. They're kind of we're, a little we're, bit hidden, but you'll see them in right, a second. We're right in the middle of launching. I think yeah. we've launched three already. Yeah. And these are brand new models, the brand new Altima, the Pathfinder, the Sentra, and then a couple more that are coming this year. And these cars are going to be one of the main things that really helps them hit these share numbers. Now, the thing that's a little bit difficult is in order to hit these share numbers, they need to be able to sell these cars before they're actually available. So one of the big things that they're pushing is pre-sales. And as you guys know, that can be a little bit challenging because we're going to auto shows to reveal vehicles that are not there. We're asking people to go into dealerships and put down money to reserve a vehicle that they can't see. And so we've really been asked, you know, as their agency partner to step in and help fill this gap and make sure that we're pushing those sales goals um, even before they're in the showroom. So that's kind of the backdrop, excuse me, the backdrop of what's happening here. And that's what Nissan wants to accomplish. But the customer, they still want to be able to see this car here hear it, touch it, drive it. They don't want to, I mean, this is a big purchase. They don't want to go spend all this money for something that they haven't experienced and they're not excited about. So that means that we've come up against a big gap between what the customer wants and what the Nissan business needs to accomplish. And so that's really where our focus has been on this work. And the, the second screen work that we're going to show, we have another example of work that we're going to show as well. All of it is really geared towards getting people to engage, getting them excited, and getting them to really explore these vehicles digitally because they don't often exist in the real world yet. And so that's about bridging that gap. Um, this is just kind of a, cl a quick example. When we first started uh, with Nissan a few years ago, we were working on the LEAF. And it was a similar challenge in that we had to get excitement about the LEAF and reveal this car before it was available too. And there was a big focus on clicks and getting people to visit the page and they could navigate with their mouse. But we've really moved beyond that now. And now we're focusing on different kinds of interactions. And a lot of the stuff that we're doing now, it's much more about driving engagement. It's about getting people to navigate with their iPad using the gyroscope features. Mm -hmm. It's about also getting them to use their phone, take that car for a test drive. You can drive the car now on your phone. And it's about making sure that even voice recognition is being pulled in. Hasn't launched yet, but we're getting close. Um, anything that we can do to make these experiences more engaging, make them more immersive, it's just going to drive to those goals. All right. All Take right. Yeah, yeah. This is now. now this is where it gets uh, more fun than the than the intro setup. <laughs> it always right. gets the fun stuff, right? All the creative directors do. <laughs> All right. I might get you to still operate yeah. the the computer. All right. Um, now, what we're going to be talking about here is, is we're going to show you guys how we're putting uh, people into the action. And that's really our creative direction for almost all of our projects. We, we often call it first person. And, uh, you know, that's kind of putting our user in the car, on the location, 
on the set, and we're going to show you a couple of examples here where we put our customers at Silverstone. So, uh, and, and the whole spirit is is kind of putting you there as if you were really there. That's our that's our ultimate goal. Um, and uh, you know, for our Pathfinder, we had some fun with it. It's not only putting you on the mountain, but it's also putting you in the car to kind of experience that. You know, it's a, it kind of reminds me when I look at this. I'm, I'm sure that some of this wildlife exists here. All right, so GT Academy, Fast Cars, a killer video game, and a reality TV show. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard of the program before, it's a, it's a program that was actually led by our partners at Shiat. And, uh, you know, the, the, the spirit of this is, is getting video gamers, people who are passionate about racing games, and uh, seeing how well they would do actually in a real race car. And, uh, you know, that in its own kind of has a lot of that um, kind of putting you into the action. And, and our job was um, showing you the the kind of the support mechanism digitally and how we can actually translate that online. Uh, there was over 300,000, I think 300,000 registrants, uh, you know, through uh, playing the video game. And we wanted to find the best video game race car drivers. And through the registration, uh, they were able to pull 32 of the best, send them down to San Diego, then they were able to compete against each other, and 16 of them were selected to go to Silverstone in the UK to race uh, Zs and GTRs, and using the cars, the Nissan cars, to uh, get, you know, we had professional coaches, race car drivers to train these athletes. We were there to not only capture you know, uh, you know, because there was a TV show that was, it was a reality TV show that was aired on, on Spike, but we were there to capture a different spirit and a different uh, um, direction for the online portion. So what we called it, you know, we wanted to get people in the cars and we called it taking it for a hot lap. And you were able as a user to select one of the many vehicles to take it and race it around the, race it around the track. And we put you in that kind of first person point of view. It's a very visceral experience. You can hear it, you can touch it. We really want to get you in the cars on the track. So watch this case study video, it kind of gets you that little feeling of what we've done online. In under eight months, Nissan took a video gamer and turned him into a podium GT driver. GT Academy. Speed TV brought the drama to the living room. Our job was to make it digital and bring it to the web and beyond. The idea? Put people into the cockpit. Give them a first-person experience of these race cars. The instruments needed to go from gamer to racer. Start in the pits. Choose your weapon. Jump in. Look around. Learn about every part of that car. Performance, handling, technology. Then take it for a hot lap. Drive it through interactive video in a full 360-degree panoramic experience. Right from the Stowe's track in Silverstone, UK. Using the gyro capabilities in iPads and iPhones, we took the experience to the next level and made it even more real, more visceral. You could feel your heartbeat faster, hear the horsepower, smell the tire smoke. The result? We took millions along for one winner's life-changing ride and put Nissan on the minds, lips, Twitter feeds, and Facebook pages of the masses. Immersive, genuine, real-life, cinematic, in person, first person, virtual to reality. The impact? As a competitor in the GT Academy in Silverstone, I think you guys did an awesome job of capturing what it was actually like to be there. We'll be there to see the next crop of dreamers through the Academy. The best part? So will everyone else. All right, what was awesome about this is most people will never have an opportunity to jump in one of these cars. And we were able, able to capture uh, these cars internally, externally, on the track, um, you know, using dozens of GoPro ca cameras and helicopters. And uh, we had a team of, uh, you know, a, a large team of the Shite creatives that were kind of capturing a lot of this creative. And we were there as well to kind of capture as much as we can for the digital portion of this. You basically piggybacked on their budgets. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to, you <laughs> so know, get they, at. They were there for the TV shoot. They were there for their stuff. But we were able to take kind of a really small group with really minimal digital spend use a lot of what they were doing, use a little bit of extra money to get some of the things that we needed, but it was a great way for us to get a lot of content just for the web that we might not have had otherwise. And, and you know, the, as you can see that, uh, 
getting people in the cars and on the track. That was, uh, you know, the end goal. It, it was very successful. Uh, the second piece that we're going to show you here is, is we're even now taking it a step further. Uh, we were looking at uh, connecting with Facebook and even making it more personalized uh, through the web and, and having you kind of go through the G GT Academy uh, as if you were a competitor and using your Facebook feed to kind of fill in some of those personalized moments within the video. And uh, this is what it looks like. We're using your portrait as the pass. Getting greeted, a lot of this stuff is kind of, uh, we'll show you how it was filmed. Having your name Only one on the you. jacket. We'll take this helmet home. And Only Scott kind of gives our client, in case you were curious. Best car driver. <laughs> Kind of takes you through a story of getting accepted, going through the different challenges of the cars, and then ultimately succeed at the end. Stage of the competition. Again, using your portrait to give you the ranks on the mobile. And then ultimately having your being represented with the with the red helmet and having your name on the car, which is gonna end. Victory is anyone's. But today, victory is yours. All right, and uh yeah, so using Facebook, using the video, bringing those two components together and, and, and kind of now even increasing the personalized component of it. And we'll, now we're going to transition a little bit to the second screen, which I know is something you guys are all interested in. But we thought it was important to kind of show you the overall program so that you can see the context that this is living within. Because I think too many times we go out and try to say, let's do second screen. We check that box off. But if you haven't built the right amount mm -hmm. of context around it, the right hooks, the right ties to get people to engage in that content, it won't be successful. And so that's why we think it's important to see this overall story as well. Uh, our, our insights are, you know, as everybody's pretty obvious insights, you're watching TV and you have a laptop, a phone, a computer on your lap already. Mm -hmm. and, and people are already engaged like this. We're just kind of piggybacking on what people are already doing. Uh, you know, there has been, you know, HBO has been kind of connecting a little bit with their TV shows uh, with, with the, you know, with an app and it's, it's all time synced. And this is something that we've done here. We're now using the TV show, using the iPad or any other computer device and what we initially did was we time synced it to the, to the content of the TV show and we extended that content. Again, talking to the user, not just as bonus content, but talking to the user as if we were uh, coaching them, as if they were again there. Putting you in the action uh, was still really the direction for the type of content we built here. So here's a little bit of the time sync that you had a minute before that that piece of content would be available to you. So when you go into the next one, the type of content that we looked at, here's one type of content where we introduce you to the car and we're using the host of the TV show to walk us around the vehicle. What's going on guys? I'm gonna give you an inside scoop to what goes on at the Nissan GT Academy. First of all, the director, Jess Wirt, this is his toy. This is Nissan GTR. So this was exclusive to the users on, on the, the couch. Planet. It goes like 200 miles per hour. Look on the other side. It's all blacked out, matte on top. Can't even see through. Look, can you see me? This is like midnight on wheels. All this rig back here, they can put the camera on the back and they can also put the camera on the front. They have to make sure it's matted out so there's no reflection. <laughs> 
Now, every time sync, we had like three or four types of components uh, of the type of features we would have there, and they would last up to a minute, minute and a half. And again, you know, we try to time it right by the commercial break. Uh, you know, area. And we had other types of content where you're able to get involved, see results, participate, communicate with other people who are online, vote, stuff like that, just to participate. Um, this type of content now, this is taking one of the professional race car drivers, and he's now giving you kind of a, a tutorial of what it takes to uh, be a drifter. This is one of the best features. It's got a lot of engagement. A lot of people came back and watched it many times. It has a very short wheelbase and a wide track, which gives a lot of stability and helps with getting that car to flick sideways and maintain uh, control. I'd say the biggest misconception we of We can probably keep going just for the sake of time, unless you guys want to learn how to drift. <laughs> I can tell now, you guys are drifting in you. I can tell. You, you know what? When we watch that that whole uh, you know personalization piece and a lot of the content we're seeing here today, and when I mean first person, sometimes we we mean that literally. We uh, we went out looking to you know to shoot this stuff from the perspective of kind of like the GoPro, but that didn't quite work. We needed something uh, a little higher quality, and and uh, we were looking at possibly getting it custom made uh, through a, another shop, and the budgets came back like twenty five grand for a helmet. So we're just like, okay, that won't work. So we had our creative. Teams uh, in house, and they uh, they rigged up. They built their own helmet, attached it, you know, with the whole, um, you know, uh, the brackets. Um, and ultimately, a lot of the stuff that you've seen, where they're kind of running through the mud and and being a part of the competitors, they were. Uh, we actually had them. You know, there were 16 competitors, and they actually gave him a full suit too. Just so sometimes, if he was in the set or in the scene, he would be looking like one of the athletes. So he was uh, alongside for a lot of the filming to be that 17th competitor to actually get a lot of the footage that we were able to produce for our customers and our users. And again, something like this, you know, instead of spending $25,000 on a <laughs> rig, we spent two grand to build this. So when you think about that particular footage, we flew a guy over, they let him be there with the, with the action, and we spent two grand on a helmet. So it really was not that much of an investment. Because I know that's, that's always a big question whenever we talk about this project is, what were the budgets behind this? <laughs> yeah. um, really a very low investment to get a lot of great content. All right, so uh, a couple of more things about GTA quickly before we switch gears. Um, we, it's, it's always a little difficult to share results because our clients can be a little bit, uh, little bit concerned about that. Um, but what I can tell you is engagement for this content on the site was higher than any other area of the site. Um, we definitely had you know, above average click-through rates, time spent. Um, it's not so much of a true lead driver. Um, we do had, did still have a lot of leads, more than you would expect from this type of content, but it's really more of a, a brand piece. The Nissan brand stands for innovation. It stands mm -hmm. for excitement. It stands for performance. This is kind of their halo piece that they use to prove that. And then they want to say, hey, go check out the Z, go check out the Juke, because uh, a lot of people may not buy a GTR, but it starts to kind of make that connection and then push them into some of those other vehicles. Um, the other thing I would say is we also learned a valuable lesson in that we're doing this again this year, and um, I think we can get better at some of the integration pieces with the campaign. We, we learned the hard way that Spike had a lot of the traffic going back to Spike uh, from the media buy. We need to fix that this year and get more of it going to the site. So we did good. It was successful. We're doing it again. But we also learned some good lessons that more integration is necessary to get even more, more hooks. out of this. Yeah. A lot more hooks. So, and then... We want to switch gears just a little bit because taking this whole immersive experience um, just a little bit further, we wanted to quickly show you another project that we've done for Nissan called the Pathfinder Connect. Well, you know, this was a, it was a, as, as Amanda said earlier, it's a, uh, we had a big business uh, gap. They wanted to release a car, but there wasn't a car available. And uh, so from fast cars to no cars and, and, uh, and, you know, there's different ways that we can do this. And CG is the natural place to go. But again, we're looking to um, really build on that engagement and make it far more immersive. Uh, now, for this particular problem, this car was going to be launched at the auto show, the Detroit auto show. Uh, was it Detroit or Chicago? Yeah, I can't recall. It was supposed to be at Detroit and they moved, moved to Chicago. Chicago. Mm -hmm. And they, they had no car to unveil, so they're probably going to have some photos up, some CG photos, but we thought that we could do something that uh, allowed the user to really get a better sense what this vehicle is all about. And we looked to, we, we got in conversations with Microsoft and we partnered with them with another partner uh, that helped us build uh, an incredible experience. And so we, we created a vehicle and 
we wanted this one. We really stepped towards where, again, it, it, it is video, but it is interactive video, so to speak. And, and for those of you who have connects at home and play video games, that's really what inspired this. Um, it is the full motion. It's the lean of the body. So if you want to actually look to the left of the car, you move left. If you want to look to the right, you move right. If you want to kneel down and look at the tires, you do that naturally. And the car, the visuals of the car will react according to your body movements. Nothing beats being able to walk up to a new car, look at it, touch it, connect with it, firsthand, in first person. It's why auto manufacturers put on auto shows, to build those connections between cars and people, real connections. But what if you don't have a real car? <laughs> when Nissan asked us to connect people with their all-new Pathfinder, they didn't have a production car ready. So we turned to technology. One technology in particular, Connect. First, we had to build a real-world space where we could develop a real-world experience to test Kinect's capabilities. We needed a place that could translate the scale of life-size movements and gestures in a life-size environment. We created a place to truly connect the person to the Pathfinder. We tracked lifelike camera paths, natural movements, and real-time reactions against these motions, bringing the entire experience to life. We calibrated head placement and hand and arm gestures to move around, Climb inside and enjoy it from every seat, just like you would if you were at the dealer's, or in this case, the auto show, checking it out for real. Crouching to see the tires, popping the tailgate, playing with seating and storage options, and walking around to see it from every angle. It worked, taking the idea of a virtual walk around way beyond virtual, creating a real way for people to connect with something that wasn't real at all, in a medium they'd never considered, in ways they'd never conceived before. What we have here is, again, the world's first application of um, Microsoft Software Development Kit and essentially using the Connect technology, which are in millions of households, and tying it directly to our products, in this case here, the all-new Pathfinder concept. I mean, there's no reason that this technology can't come, you know, in partnership with Microsoft right from your, your home Connect system. Um, again, using visual images that allows you to fully experience the vehicle um, before you go and physically shop for the car at a dealership. You know, it's a, uh, you know, so, some of the things that are our, our goals was is to bring the feature sets as much as um, you know as to the level that we usually have on our campaign sites or our sites that allow you to fold down the seats and and look at the configurations and pop the doors and and really explore the car inside and out from every feature angle and with this we're able to do that with your body motions your hand gestures your head gestures even your your leg gestures you're able to experience the seats folding down and the different types of configurations opening and closing uh, many of the devices of the vehicle and this all also led to uh, this being put in 16 dealerships um, as a way to drive pre-orders for the vehicles before those vehicles were actually available in the dealerships. And um, they were very successful from a PR standpoint, which wasn't really what we were going for, but it drove a ton of traffic into those dealerships. And a lot of the dealerships that had them also sold quite a few cars with it. But we did learn that sometimes automotive dealerships are not the most technically progressive. And you cannot imagine how many phone calls we got about how to hook up Wi-Fi to those kiosks or different <laughs> things like that. So it was yeah. that part was a little bit challenging with it. Um, you know, and kind of in closing, because I know we're running close on time, um, one of the things really, I mean, video to us is becoming a way, it's a tool. It's a tool to put people into these experiences, to activate them, to get them engaged, to help close this gap between what Nissan's trying to accomplish and what we know those customer needs are. And we wanted to take a few minutes just to think about how this could apply possibly to your businesses, uh, just as takeaways. And really, I mean, the biggest thing, I think, is making sure there's an unmet oh need God. to fill. I mean, It helps. <laughs> there was no car. The Pathfinder Connect was beautiful because there was no car there. If there's a car right there, walk over and open the door. You know, it's, it's not about doing something because it's a gimmick or because it's cool. It's about doing something because it solves a problem. Um, also... The emotion part is so important. I mean, I think that's very clear with GTA. It gets you excited. You, you, you care about that vehicle. You want to learn more. It gets your heart moving a little faster. Wakes we, you up. We, we want you to feel something. So yeah. we look at video and audio as a key components to many of our experiences. Because at the end of the day, purchasing a car is very emotional. And we want, you, mm -hmm. we want our customers to feel something. Mm -hmm. um, and also just making sure that it's taking place on a personal level. Um, 
This is a huge advantage for us, interactive yeah. though. Mm -hmm. you know, when we look at video, um, you know, it can be passive, uh, but it also can be interactive. And because we're on the web space, we, we really look at ways to make it digitally worthy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're looking to tell these stories and looking at our tool set to be more than a passive experience. We're looking at what's our hook and what, what's going to actually uh, create more engagement with our customers. And last, just thinking beyond clicks, clicks are easy. What more can we do? Well, how do we take advantage of the new technology? How do we make sure that we aren't, we aren't becoming stale and that we're continuing to push forward in the same way the technology is pushing forward? And um, we thought we'd close with one of the best first-person experiences that we've all seen <laughs> recently. Sometimes you just got to take a leap <laughs> and go for it. So, Great. Thank you, Amanda and Steve. Any, anybody have any questions for, on this? Yeah, John. Hi guys, thanks. That was really interesting. I'm John Wolf from Cara, New York. Um, can you talk a little bit about how you actually got people to go to your experiences? Because mm -hmm. that's probably just as important as yeah. the experiences itself. Yep. Um, a lot of different things. I mean, there's the traditional, and um, we have this uh, on the homepage to try to drive the traffic that's already there into, into the, these different experiences. Uh, email drops that are taking place. Um, not as much media as we would like. I mean, obviously things like Pathfinder get a lot of media exposure, but it's not always, GT Academy itself may not get that much broad TV exposure. Um, for a lot of these, we're trying to really use social and see that to drive traffic. We're trying to leverage the traffic we already have on the site, uh, email drops. Um, we've also found that even things like coming and talking to you guys today, there'll be a huge spike in the traffic tomorrow, whether it's just this conference posting it or you guys checking it out. Um, but really, a lot of it has been organic um, and social that we've seen drive a lot of this, and even search. Because people will go and we look at those keywords to understand what they're focusing on. And performance is something that people search on quite a bit with Nissan. And that has let us get people into GTA as well. Uh, just to um, kind of uh, you know uh, remind for the second screen experience, it was tied to the TV show. So the TV show did have mm -hmm. those snipes that popped up mm -hmm. three times a show, and that was you know to allow users time and remind them to go yeah. to. What kind of scale were you able to see? I know you, I'm sure you can't give us numbers, <laughs> but in, but in terms of I mean that's one of the, the initial worries about second screen is really how many people want to do this, mm -hmm. and when you even have a, when you're even using the TV content yeah. itself to flag that experience and invite people in, what did you learn about how many yeah. of these people you can get? You know, we, we got quite a bit. Uh, what we learned, though, was like one of the reasons I mentioned the drifting being so popular, people were curious about that. So when the call to action was learn how to drift, I think that drove a lot more engagement than just say, who's your favorite driver? Your, your, your content is imperative mm -hmm. to, uh, to grab your users and their interests. So, you know, and we were that, so that, that sort of the first run at second screens has often had been it's a cool technology. See how this you know see yeah. how things move across screens. But you're you're saying you really need content to is a lot king. More substantial than that. Yes, yes. Um, I, I would say you know, we're going to be doing this again for the third season of GTA that's going to be coming this year, and second screens already being talked about. The content's the most important piece. We, we, can, it's, we can drive the calls to action. We can drive the traffic into it, but people aren't going to keep using it and going back unless it's something that they're really interested in. You, you, you also to... mentioned that you were, you were sort of synchronizing this stuff towards the, the commercial pods, which oh, yeah. sort of raises a question about how Spike TV feels about you distracting their users during commercial No, pods. actually, that wasn't the issue. It's, it's just working closely with our partners at Shy to make mm -hmm. sure that, that the audience was engaged with the TV show at the right times. Yeah. And even the type of content that we did have uh, at the time that we just we want to keep it short, keep it simple, uh, it allowed our customers to go back at any moment. Once it was unlocked, you can go back at any time to engage even yeah. further if you'd like. And the, um, and the short content outtakes, they did refer back to the microsite where the longer information was present, and that got a lot of people back to the site as well. Are you going to move the Connect experience to the Connect for consumers? I mean, it seems like, the, like a natural... You know, talking about ad, it. Ad for the Connect platform. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely something that we're looking at. Yeah, give us something on Connect. I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. As, a, as many of our friends here are going to know, there's a lot of media buys that get tied into that as well. So that's a part of some of the uh, upfront negotiations that Nissan's doing. Hi, um, Zoe Hankin, Karen, New York. Um, as far as your original business objectives, mm -hmm. how were you able to attribute um, any of this to sales, um, mm -hmm. and were you able to? Yeah, um, a few things. I mean, 
in the in the case of say a connect the business objective was reveal the pathfinder there's no car so by doing that you can kind of say check you know we accomplished that um but relief yeah leaf is different like yeah. leaf was pre-orders right uh wait, i'm just gonna get to that in just sure. a second um but even at the auto show they're collecting those leads and we can track those back the match back to sales um, also, just things like the booth traffic that they had was an all-time high. So there were some soft measures that we were able to look at. Um, but with these pre-orders for Leaf and also then Altima and a lot of these other vehicles, we were able to track real engagement, people putting down deposits. Um, and it sold cars. So, I mean, it's obviously, you know, Nissan's always going to want to sell more cars, and the customer's always going to be a little hesitant because they'd like to see this car. But I was actually surprised by how many pre-orders were, were driven through this. I thought people might be a little bit more hesitant uh, but they made the reservations. Uh, we saw traffic to the dealerships increase and the sales matchback increased as well. It helps too, you know, with the Leaf specifically, when you have such a special car that's 100% electric and it was the first mass produced electric vehicle, it will, people will trust that process because mm-hmm. it's a brand new process. You know, you keep in mind that, you know, people are being buying cars the same way for the, for a hundred mm-hmm. years. They want to see it, touch it. We're here just to kind of bring, you know, bridge that gap just a little mm-hmm. bit closer. But when you're dealing with special vehicles like Leaf, it makes our jobs a little bit easier because the product is outstanding. Mm-hmm. Amanda and Steve, thanks very much. Great, sure. great presentation. Thanks, thanks guys. Let me, before, uh, let me ask Tim and his panel to come up. Uh, we have to swap out the, uh, Steve, the is podium and, sure thing. and add a chair. But as we do, I have one uh, important announcement for those of you who are uh, taking, the bu- taking our shuttle bus back to the city. It's going to start loading at noon, uh, and there will be food on the bus <laughs> this time. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know exact. I don't want to know what the menu is, but uh, but it'll start loading at noon. Uh, leave at like leave it. Start loading at noon. Leave at twelve thirty, and there will be food. So, if the throughway is clogged, you won't be you won't be stuck hungry. Yeah, sandwiches. Let me let me do a quick straw poll of, of over the top boxes that people have. Um, how, ma- how many of you how many of you have uh, still have a Google TV attached to your uh, to your TV at home? Uh, okay, I'm the only one. Uh, who Ro- Roku? Who has a Roku box? Thank you. Boxy. Okay, Apple TV. Yeah. yeah okay. Um, you know, uh, from the um, I, me- I mentioned the other day that I covered uh, I've been covering digital media since about 1996, and the first generation of web TV I recall well. Um, everything back to the Spot, to the Den. If everybody remembers the Den. Those guys, half of those guys are in jail, I think now. Um, and uh, uh, and then pseudo TV, um, and then the, some of the first iterations of, of Boxy when it was just on uh, on PC. Um, Blip TV uh, in the in the 2000s. The um, every time I interviewed one of the 